Um, the guys just passed the ball so well today, and, and Andrew did such a, got a good job of distributing it. We just were super efficient in transition. thought our defense was outstanding. Um, I haven't looked at the final stats yet. Do we have a box score? Actually, I'd love to see one. Um, thank you. Um, our serving was great. We had a lot of success with float serves today. So that, that really worked well for us. So we made some adaptations there and kept that going, which was really successful for us. Um, I'm pleased with the guys, just with the way they came in and competed. I, I can't emphasize enough how challenging it is to have a bye. And for us to have a bye and to come in and play that first set, the way we played that first set was one of the most impressive things I've seen in a team in a Final Four. Um, so I, I'm really, really proud of the way we came in with that competitive mindset uh, we were just ready to go, and you could see it, and it set the tone for the match. So um, just really, obviously, very pleased with the way this, this match went for us and excited about playing on Saturday. Coach, aloha. Um, aloha. Cindy Lewis for Off the Block because Vinny is not clear to play. Okay. Um, questions from Vinny. Mm. What did you think about Andrew's play tonight? I thought it was, was amazing. Um, I've been telling him not to turn and swing and hit a ball all year long. And when he turned, it was all or none for Andrew right then. You know, it was going to be like the greatest play ever or the worst one of his career, and he made it happen. So and, um, all kidding aside, I, he's done an amazing job, and he did it all tonight. Um, he, he played a complete game and just really put the hitters in such great situations all night long. So just uh, outstanding performance from a, a freshman who it really is. I know we said it all along, and, and – um, now we can say it when he's in the room. He just has a level of maturity that most young men his age don't bring to the game. And it's really fun to be a part of and, and, and really witness. And secondly, um, what are you going to be paying most attention to as you scout the next match? Oh, well, that is a very good question. I don't know that there's a singular answer there for Vinny. Um, there's just so much that we're going to be observing. First, you have to you have to choose a team if you're going to be charting and really really studying it. So and here, I, I, I don't know what you do. You, there are two great teams. Um, so I, I think one assistant will be doing one team. Another assistant will be doing another team. I'll be kind of watching how things transpire. We'll go back and watch some more video and break it all down and come do it again Saturday. Thanks. Hey, John. Uh, Chuck Kurtz, I'm from Volleyball Magazine. Mm -hmm. here. Um, you mentioned the other day that you, you and just tied in with something you said earlier, you weren't sure what the formula was to keep these guys fresh and, and alert and whatever through this long layoff. So obviously you figured it out, but could you, but could you sense coming in, you know, in the last couple of days of practice that they were really locked in and, and dialed into what they were doing? Uh, yes, yes. I, I thought that we did a great job of training. Um, it was really hard, just long. And so I think guys at times were getting a little edgy and they were ready to get going and um, I, I think they felt some level of fatigue because we kept pushing a little bit. I, I kept pushing in the weight room and those types of things. Cause I just, it's got to be about this week, and um, I, I think that that worked really well. So uh, I, I don't know. I, we could go back and really dive into the details of what we did. At the end of the day, we were just super specific with aspects of the game that we continued to improve on. Like we were just, how can we get better? How can we get better today? How can we get better today? We didn't, we didn't waste a day. And uh, certainly from an intention perspective, and uh, so, and we, we showed it tonight. We got better at some things. And as being a Pittsburgh guy, I have to ask you this: you, you put uh, uh, McDonough in there for a couple of those serves, and it ties in again what you said earlier with the float. Was that just an idea of throwing something at them? Maybe they hadn't seen much before, uh, just to mm. change it up a little bit. No, I've been doing some different things at that position and, and trying to just get some more points from the service line. We, we did really well there. One of the better matches we've had in a while at that spot. So Guy did a good job with his float. Coleman coming in not only gives you a float, but he gives you a, a really good defensive opportunity. He's a, he's a good defender. So um, and, and then he went and got an ace for all of Pittsburgh. You know? so, uh, yeah, so it was fun to see that, too. Don't tell Pat. Pat will try to steal him. Oh, I know. That's right. Uh, yeah. One more thing before I pass the mic. Uh, Andrew, uh, what made you decide this is the time I'm going to swing at it? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> um, yeah, it just kind of happened. I had the two dumps before it, and I just thought, why not keep it going? So, so I did it. Uh, yeah, I got a question for Alex. Um, so earlier today, I was talking to one of my friends who's also a reporter. He said that last year he saw you watching the 
finale uh, by yourself. And that uh, earlier, you know, this year you told me that you guys had a poster of the point that ended you guys' the season last year. Um, what does it mean to win against this team, obviously coming from what happened last year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it started in 2018 with the national championship game. I was there as well. Um, I'm local for around Westwood. So I know the history of Long Beach UCLA and to be able to be a part of the win is, is great. And, you know, I'm going to remember this game for the rest of my life, I think. Super proud of the guys, and we just all came together and we played with a lot of heart tonight. So I'm super proud of the guys. Uh, Coach Bra, um, Merrick had a uh, slow start to the match. What do you attribute that to? Uh, the randomness of the game, honestly. Um, there was a couple transition plays. I think he was trying to go real fast trying to get him to increase his speed a little bit. And I know because of that, he kind of got through one of those balls early and sent it wide, which is very uncharacteristic. Um, but, uh, I mean, he had some, some great swings. Um, it was, I mean, if you look at our box score, it's a little atypical in that Merrick really d didn't hit like, you know, 800. Um, so I think where you, where you really see it, and this is the first time I take a look at it, is just how everybody else picked it up along the way too. So this team has depth, we know it. Uh, we have a number of ways that we can win. A uh, question for you, Alex. Um, obviously it's really difficult to defeat a team three times in the same season. What was the uh, biggest difference and biggest challenge that you saw from Long Beach um, tonight versus the two times that you saw them earlier this year? Mm -hmm. They established our middle a little bit more, I think. Um, they're a great team, but our coaches made it extremely great scouting report and props to them for that. So. We came in and knew that we had to do the same thing and stay aggressive and just follow the game plan. And when we did that, we were successful. Question for Andrew. Yeah. Beach flipped their lineup a couple times trying to get better matchups for you guys. Um, what is going through your mind so that you keep um, playing, you're playing, you're winning the chess match? Um, honestly, in my mind, I'm just thinking, let's see if they can stop what we got. So I can use the example of Merrick. Um, He's such a physical guy that you could just keep him on the same set the majority of the times you get a kill. So, and we have, and when you have Merrick in the middle, it's definitely a presence. And so it kind of disrupts the blockers of the other team. So I wasn't really too worried about the matchups. Um, it was more just getting my guys in a spot to succeed. Yeah, question for Andrew. Um, uh, the first thing coach mentioned was the passing tonight. And you just talked about the jobs that, you know, Troy Gooch, Ethan, and Alex did tonight. And giving you all your options out there? Uh, it was probably the easiest setting I, I've had in a while. Um, yeah, they did awesome. The passing was the perfect. The hustle in the back row was awesome. Um, we got digs and we made plays. And I think that's kind of what we've been stressing a lot recently, just scrapping for the ball. So I think we did great on that end. At the back here, uh, for Coach and even the players, uh, Ali Sherman from Baller Kings, uh, 06, I believe, was the last UCLA national championship. Um, also, the, the last year you won a Coach of the Year. Mm -hmm. So with synergy of that and just the fact that there's 19 previous championships, what's the immediate pressure on your on your mind right now, knowing that you know the finals coming up and UCLA is used to winning that? I can speak for myself, um, maybe because I could potentially bear the weight of that just because of the history and, and my time in the program. And, uh, honestly, Ellie, I don't feel it. I, I don't think about um, the history or the 19 or I just, I'm trying to be exceptionally present and to have a, a really firm, confident belief that we are taking every day and just making the most of it. You know, I'm, you're just trying to use every practice, be super intentional. I think we're very good at that. I was thinking today, it, it, we were talking about peace of mind, and um, we we were. I was thinking about every practice and what would I have done different, or could I have? And maybe there's some little decisions here or there about a drill. Okay, you're always going to probably think like that, but I don't think there was a day where it, we didn't come in with like some. Hey, this is what we're going to do today. Here's how we're going to get better. I know that for sure. So for me, what happened in 2006 and all those years in between, I just know I can control today. I think we emphasize that with our guys. This is their time. This is their opportunity to win a title. And all the years in the past and the alumni and all the guys that won it uh, two or three times during their career, I know for sure they're very supportive. I think they understand 
how challenging it is. There's more boys playing the game. It's incredibly competitive. It's hard to win it. It's not easy to win it. And I, I tell you, I don't receive anything but support from the alumni. Just great techs. They've been phenomenal. Uh, continue to be super inclusive. I, they, they just want it for us. And, and so I'm, I'm super proud of that and, and grateful for that. And uh, I just, I don't want to do it for these guys. It's their time. Alexandru, I'm BJ Evans with USA Volleyball. Um, can you talk a little bit about how your international experience on uh, age group national teams has helped you get to where you are? For sure, yeah. I mean, when you get to play against the best people in the country and then go internationally and play the best people in the world, that improves your game so much. And I've had great experiences with USA Volleyball. And to be able to travel and get those environments when I'm in high school has prepared me for college. We're on the road in Virginia, which is pretty far away from California. So to have these experiences um, early on has really developed me as a player and as a person as well. Yeah, I think um, from my experiences, international ball is very different. And so overall, I think it just makes you a way better player. Um, Can you expand on that a little bit? It's just, there's also like, we're, I play for U21. Mm -hmm. And so we were playing against one of Cuba's national team players. And so obviously you're playing against a guy with more experience um, at a higher level and with the physicality of somebody like Merrick and you got to figure out how to stop him. Um, and so I think it just makes you a better player overall. Thanks. Uh, back here again. Uh, so I, this is a question for whoever wants to answer, but I mean, you guys already mentioned we're pretty far from California, but sometimes in there it felt like Poly Pavilion. Uh, what did it mean for you guys to have so many, you know, friends and family members here to come watch you guys? And what did you guys think of the atmosphere overall? Go ahead. Yeah, it means a lot. I think, you know, we've had great fans all year long that supported us and the messages like Coach Ed from the alumni and, you know, all the people that are bought into this program is a team effort and it takes a village and all the fans have come together and to see us win that match and turn around to our fans and see them celebrating is just, you know, a great memory that I'm always going to remember. and. You know, super happy that they're all out here and excited for Saturday as well. Uh, for Andrew or Alex, um, the, the start that Ito got off to and Ethan, they both had, I think they combined for 13 kills or something in the first set. I mean, could you sense maybe the beach was demoralized a little bit or was it more of a, a, something that got you guys more into the match and more pumped up? Um, from the beginning, Ito was telling me, you know, I'm here for this. He was like, give me the ball, I'm ready. And so, you know, I think we won that battle on our end. Um, I think we, you know, got on him, and then, you know, that could have made him demoralized. But I think we did great things at the beginning of the game, especially Champlin and Ethan. They put up amazing numbers and made great plays. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, at this point in the season, not everyone's 100%, but I think we played with a lot of heart tonight. And when you're not feeling your best, you have to make that up with heart. And so... They're just competitors and, you know, they love to win. So we're not super worried about what the other team's thinking or, you know, if they're demoralized, we're kind of focusing more on our side and what we need to do. But I think we played one point at a time all night and that's what I'm most proud of. Hi, Diane with Off the Bluff. You were here in January and played George Mason over in Iraq. Did you have a chance to pop in here and look at the facility or uh, is this the first time you've been since you you're here? Uh, you know, a couple of days, and what do you think of the facility? Uh, we did get to visit this facility when we were playing George Mason. And I think it was awesome because it just made us familiar with the gen and the setting and kind of what it was going to be like. So we weren't totally shocked when we got here. Um, All the green and gold. <laughs> it's a great place to play, especially for serving. You know, there's no lights right down the middle, but it's a great gym. Different than Maples, John. <laughs> Yeah. Andrew, um, you've got one of the best setters in program history on the bench with you, with Brandon Tully Farrell. Uh, what has he done to help you this season? He really helps me on the mental side of the game. So that's thinking about matchups, um, thinking about blockers, thinking about our hitters, and when they're in slumps or when they're doing great. And um, I honestly can't even express how much he's made me better. Um, technically and mentally so obviously I don't take it for granted it's one of the coolest things is being able to be coached by him. 
one last question. There's also a blast from UCLA's past and Ozzy Bolstad. Has he helped you out at all? Ozzy's here? Yes. <clears throat> well, he has helped me. I haven't seen him in a very long time. Um, but he used, so he, for sure he's helped me because he was the graduate assistant coach when I was a red shirt. So back in uh, fall of 90, spring of 91, winter, spring of 91, he was our coach. And so <clears throat> I would love to see him. And uh, he helped me a ton. He was an amazing volleyball player. So we got to see him. And by the end of the year, it, there was just, we played three on three a lot. Because on, on the second court back then, it was myself redshirting, Jeff Nygaard redshirting, Kevin Wong redshirting, uh, Eric Sullivan redshirting, Ross Peer, and Ozzy Volstead. And we would, with a lot of triples and that kind of stuff as well. Because everybody else was, that wasn't on the first court, they were upperclassmen, they, they pieced out there at the beach already. And so that, that, that's kind of how it worked. No one even knew. We just showed up on the second court. And uh, so I'd love to say hi to Ozzy. I oh, will get the announcer to call him. Over. Yeah, yeah, do that, please. <laughs> I think he's Telus Club coach. Oh, yes, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, great. Thank you. Congratulations. We really appreciate your time. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Behind the blue